So that the first, we're going to answer the question, you know, why should you consider embedded resistors and capacitors? And then how to be a little bit more educated about going through that process uh, and some design guides uh, for that. And again, John's really an expert, so you should ask as many questions as possible and get the most out of this webinar. So again, the big question as to why. So, you know, if you have a board or a technology challenge, that's really when you should be considering uh, embedded resistors and capacitors. So it replaces uh, surface mount devices. And, you know, that means that you would have less solder joints to worry about. Uh, and if there's a lot of exposure to external forces, that could be a very good way to reduce risk uh, of mechanical failures. And then also you can use this technology to shrink your electronics and also achieve an overall better uh, signal integrity. Uh, so there are some very key advantages uh, to this technology if you're facing any of these uh, challenges. So, so again, it ultimately depends upon your application and, um, you know, taking a look at some of the kind of decision factors we've outlined this uh, chart. Um, if you're price conscious um, and you can't offset some of the cost, uh, then maybe it's not the way to go. Uh, but if there's a, if you can offset the cost and you can justify it and you're also getting benefit uh, in terms of performance, um, you know, then I think it's definitely worth it. So uh, these are some of the considerations uh, that you need to can when you're selecting embedded resistors. So you want to think about the resistance and the tolerance that you're looking for. So choosing values that you know, you want to maintain consistent impedance throughout the circuit. And then you also want to be able to modify the length or width of the resistor to adjust the resistance value. And you want to verify that all of this aligns with your PCB manufacturer's capabilities uh, and it fits your stack up. So we'll be going over that. So in terms of the next factor of power uh, dissipation and current capacity, so you want to ensure that the resistor's power rating is high enough to handle the calculated power dissipation. And you always want to select a resistor uh, with a power rating that provides a safety margin above your requirements. And this will help with uh, um, you know, your, your long-term reliability. And then another important factor is the coefficient of resistance um, and, uh, you know, this is a quick chart that, that showcases that, um, you know, you want to, the TCR will indicate how much of a resistance value changes with the temperature fluctuations. And it's measured in parts per million uh, per degree Celsius, okay? So you wanna aim for TCR values below 100 parts per million degree Celsius. In terms of the types of embedded resistors uh, with their pros and cons, uh, we've also created a chart here. So for high power or high voltage designs, you wanna go with a thick film resistor and you, know, you wanna pick thin film resistors for more precision and stability. And there's also an option of plated resistors uh, for high current and high frequency applications. So I'll let John go through those in detail uh, in his slides. So some other tips always uh, to select your embedded capacitors, always select a capacitor with a voltage rating 20 to 50% higher than the maximum expected voltage in your circuit. Uh, you can use ceramic capacitors in the range of uh, 0.01 to 0.1 microfarads. And for RF filters, you can select capacitors between one and 100 nanofarads. Some design guide pointers. So when selecting the materials for high frequency and RF applications, you obviously wanna choose materials with stale, stable dielectric constants. And for high frequency circuit boards, uh, you wanna use materials with a dielectric constant between 3.5 and 4.5. Uh, 
and you want to choose materials with low dissipation factors, uh, preferably below 0 0.005 um, to help with your uh, signal loss. In terms of uh, stack up design tips in general, uh, you want to allocate specific internal layers for embedded resistors and capacitors. Uh, and then, you know, you do that intelligently and you want to ensure that your stack up is symmetrical, that you have good copper pour, um, and then you're put, positioning your embedded components as close as possible uh, to the signal layers uh, to get the best signal performance uh, out of using uh, this technology. So, you know, again, there's always good uh, advice that we have on achieving good signal uh, performance or achieving a uniform impedance uh, across the line. So some, some points are you want to modify the trace width and clearances to match the desired impedances. Uh, you don't want to place the embedded components directly beneath critical high-speed traces unless there's a, they're part of the impedance matching network and perform the TDR measurements on prototypes um, to, to verify the impedance. And this whole technique will help, you know, solve any inconsistencies that you see across the PCB.